everyone, Turn MTG here. Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over five of the best budget meta decks currently in the Innistrad Midnight Hunt standard. And as you know, when you look at the top meta decks, they can range anywhere between 30 to 50 plus rares, even in best of one, they really can. So these decks are starting off with a lot lower rares, but still have high performing percentages. Anything between 59 and 64% of these five decks. And the most amount of rares is the deck we're going to be starting off with, which is 15 rares. Now, these are, I say rares, mixture of rares and mythics, because mythic rares, rares, um, just so there's no confusion there. Um, but yeah, this has a maximum of 15 in, in this type of configuration, and it's a mono black control discard deck. Now, this deck is definitely one that I like to play. I do like playing mono black. I do love playing with Professor Onyx, I think. Onyx Liliana is a very, very strong Planeswalker and mixed in with Turgrid God of Fright, where you can play Turgrid's Lantern as well, is obviously a very strong combination of cards. Now, the idea of this deck is to, you know, totally deplete your opponent's hand. You've got cards like Elderfang Disciple that can make your opponent discard cards. You can attack the hand with, I can't even say that one, Acquisitions Expert as well can go in there, reveal target opponent. They have to reveal a number of cards equal to your party. So this is obviously rogues, clerics, warriors, and wizards. Um, we've got clerics there, and we've got a rogue there. So sometimes you might be able to get the choice of two with Acquisitions Expert. We also do have a Graveyard Trespasser, a new card from Innistrad here. Like this card, the ward is discard a card, so very on theme with this deck if they do want to remove it. And whenever this uh, attacks or enters the battlefield, exile up to one target card from your graveyard. And you've got a little bit of life gain there, which is always handy when you're playing mono black. Mass removal, the great new card, Meat Hook Massacre, really does go against all those, you know, sort of pest decks or anything like that as well. And late game can be a lot bigger, but you do run blood on the snow in well in this deck. So it's it's nice that you've got ways to recur either Turgrid back from the graveyard or Professor Onyx with that as well. It does run Malika, so you, you know if you've got a creature down and you you know the opponent tries to kill it, you could then reanimate it and it will come back to tap. You do lose two life, which you know losing life is a bit of a theme with mono blacks. We we've all seen this before. Um, discard spells, no way out. Gets you a 2 2 zombie. Now, obviously, you can't block to put a decay zombie, but you can get a little attack in as well. But opponent discarding two cards and then you getting a creature out of it is, you know, it's a pretty decent common. Soul Shatter, great against, you know, really good against control decks if they're playing planeswalkers. You can, you know, if they tap out and drop that big creature or potential plan against onyx himself they're tapping out for that you can then soul shatter it away blood cheese thirst will deal with planeswalkers as well so all in all this is a you know it's a pretty sweet brew this is very much you know close to what i would play at mono black but this goes for more of the discard themes if there's maybe a couple of cards you're missing there's plenty of cards in black that you can really you know change over uh card draw deadly dispute Village Rights is a card, but this is good because it means you can not only sacrifice a creature, but you can sacrifice an artifact because Shambling Ghast is running probably in most mono black decks. You will see this or Eye Twitch um, ramping out a little bit of a treasure or potentially killing an early creature that opponent plays as well. And you can just sack it and draw cards, which seems pretty, pretty sweet to me. Land base is really simple. You're playing Blood and the Snows. You're going to be running 21 basics. And it runs just one hive of the eye tyrant. Now, if you wanted to up this, you could potentially add another one of these in as well. Um, it doesn't, you know, this is a really good, strong deck, and it will definitely get you wins on the meta. And, you know, this is the one with the most amount of rares, and we're going to lead down, down to the final one, which has just 10 rares. But this is mono black, and I think it'd be a very good deck to craft, and you could definitely rank up with this one. So the next deck we look at has 12 rares. It's an Azorius Magecraft aggro sort of deck. Um really this is you know not second spell it does run clarion spirit which is nice so whenever you cast your second spell at each turn create a 1-1 spirit creature token with flying there is a variation that will run um, other creatures as well but this has gone you know other second spell creatures but this has gone for the mage craft route so clever luminancer is in there you've got lots of low mana spells you'll be running slightly less lands potentially with this deck 
whenever you cast or copy an instant spell, which is what Magecraft does, this gets plus two, plus two. And it's a great early play, a one drop that comes down to zero one, but then potentially you can build this creature up or any others like it, Guiding Voice, you get to learn. So you have a cyborg with this one as well, so you can learn some lessons. Homestead Courage as well, One, all these little one drops that can potentially pump up a massive clever luminance and now if you've got a free path just to attack you can imagine how big this is going to get it's going to have a one one counter and then get plus two two every time that you maybe cast one of these small spells uh need a bit of evasion give it flying as well big up the toughness you get to untap it as well so potentially could be a blocker you've attacked in with the illuminanza and the way to play it then potentially if you don't need to fly over the top for maybe the win you can untap it and stop some big stompy thing coming at you like i said a lot of one drops in this deck its average cmc is 1.4 which is very very low runs 17 creatures 16 instants and eight sorcery spells and just the nine lands in this one so you've got Consider, nice like instant spells here. You've got Fade and Hope to bounce something, to clear the fields, which is what you want to do because it doesn't have Trample or anything like that. But you do have the Flying for Evasion, like I said, in the Wings. But eventually, people will be dropping. This is a very creature aggro format. Uh, Symmetry Sage is goes very well in this deck as well. Obviously, it has Mage Cast. When you use the Mage Cast target creature, you control as base power 2 until end of turn. So you can maybe pump up the Luminancer or something else. Uh, obviously put it on symmetry sage so next cards that we have in this deck as well leon in lightsaber uh lightsaber i always call it lightsaber because it looks like the cat is playing with lightsabers to me i know it isn't it's a light scribe uh whenever you cast or copy an instant spell but this one all creatures you control get plus one one until end of turn so this is a great little buff you can just build up these little army here and the little army will eventually get really big in this deck some other cards in there brutal cathy is in there as a one of as a one-off, is it is it essential? No, you might be able to save yourself another rare in this one and drop it down to 11, but this was in the list. And then Adeline, which, to be honest, for me personally, although Brutal is nice, I would actually prefer a second Adeline in there because I've seen this when it's on the field and left to, left to do its thing, it's really, really good. So for me, possibly you could swap them over or just save yourself uh, another rare and then put this down and then further one and maybe run an extra show of confidence or something like that. It runs two of these, but a third one wouldn't be bad because it's good. Copying spells and then having all the triggers with all the other creatures is really good. Land base, simple. 10 basics, 5 basic gardens as well, and 4 henge gate pathways. Um, but yeah, this is Azorius Magecalf and another great meta deck with a high percentage win rate that can, you know, get you some wins. So with 12 rares as well, this is a really strong deck. It's Selesnia Life Gain. Life Gain is really hard to beat. It literally can just go off to a point where your life will be so high, your opponents literally just will, they won't be able to beat you down because you'll be constantly gaining life. You've got some cards in here from the arena cards. Um, you know how I feel about arena cards, but they work well in this sort of deck. And obviously they're legal, so if they're legal, why you're not going to play them? Hallowed Priest, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on Hallowed Priest. You've got Luminarch, a sprint, nice. Only and there is a one-off in this conversion, but for me, if you definitely want to up, up the rares in this one, I would add maybe some more of these because it's a really cool card. Um, other creatures gaining life prosperous innkeeper every time something comes in and helps you ramp as well so a creature comes in gain a life can trigger with hallow priest put a 1-1 counter on it it's just a perfect combination of cards those are runs fraud trellisara whenever you gain life put a 1-1 counter on it and you get to scry one so a bit like the uh, the hallow priest you gain life put a 1-1 counter this will get the love counter and then you get to scry but this one is legendary so you know you can maybe mix up the numbers a little bit if you fancy more hello priest because this is legendary drop this down um sorry if you fancy adding in the other illuminati sparrow you can't have any more hello priest because there's already four in there uh, but yeah can if you want to cheat mcgee uh luminant asparent maybe add in there but it would obviously up the rares um rare that you have in this deck is accomplished alchemist one mana of any color add x mana of any color if x is the amount of life you gain this turn so potentially adding something big because you do have some big drops here you've got some valkyrie harbinger that can really just take over a game four or five flying life link is great in itself but the, the ability to potentially make four four white angels in a deck every time you gain four life in a in a massive life gain deck is pretty easy as well you've got clarion class that will gain life you gain that much life plus one and then you can put the counters on target creature if you go to level two so this you know there's ways in this deck to severely gain life 
Celestial Unicorn, another great common, another trigger of gaining life, put counters. You can see in this deck, it's a life gain counter deck and it can really get out of hand. These creatures will build up to be massive creatures, which is why it's so hard to you know, combat this deck sometimes. Unless opponents are playing mass removals like Constant Blood on the Snows and, and Meat Hook Massacres where they can swing stuff around and those sort of decks where they can always clear the field. But this does run 27 creatures, so it's a hell of a lot with a deck average of 2.6 as well. Not many instants or sorceries. Obviously, it's a real heavy creature build. So if you like playing creature decks, this is the deck for you, without a doubt. I love the Maul of the Skyclaves. And then it's got Righteous Valkyrie. It's got like lots of odd one drops that obviously work well in there. But, you know, if you've got some extras and say you don't have Icing Death Frost Tyrant, there's ways that you can just go around and add in extra cards like another Righteous Valkyrie instead. Or like I spoke about, Luminous Aspirant. It's not going to really damage the deck at all. It's going to, you know, it can only make it, you know, the same or enhance it as well. So uh, Celestia Life Gain, very, very strong deck. Uh, just before I go, quick look at the land base. does run Cave of the Frost Dragon, so there's an extra creature there. Basics, tapped land here for the Snow Forest, and then the Branch Cloth Pathway as well, saving some rares on the land base by adding that as well. But yeah, Selesnia Life Game, very strong deck, and if you play this, I think you will be ranking up. So the next deck we look at is probably the most one of the most popular decks in Standard in the meta, and it's one of the best budget decks you can play because it only runs 11 rares this configuration and it's mono white aggro. Very, very strong. This is more of the second spell type of aggro deck running Clarion Spirit, also running Code Spell Cleric as well and running Monk of the Open Hand. So very much based on the casting your second spell, which is why the, the average of the deck is 1.4. And just look at all those one drops there, 28 of them, 28 creatures. It runs a lot of one drops because you want to be playing double spells. You've got creatures like the Raptor, and you've also got, like I spoke about, the Cleric as well, and the Monk. You've also got Usher of the Fallen, which can create 1-1 one, one tokens with its boast effect as well, and is above average with a 2-1 for 1 as well. Very good. More one drops, you've got more of the pump ability, like I said, putting counters on like the other, other decks we've seen, and guiding voice as well, because you can learn your lesson and go to your sideboard. Now, the full deck list will be in the description. There will be links there for you to go and have a look at these, so make sure you check them all out as well. Um, Clarion is just a really good card. If you can get this down turn two, it's sweet. This runs the full full playset of the Aspirants because Aspirant is a really strong card. Like I said in the previous deck, if you want to add more of them in the previous deck we spoke about, this is um, you know it's a good card to put in there as well. Um, Leonin Lightscrape said about it whenever you cast a copy of the instant spell they all get plus one one gives them all a nice little bump and you've got lots of these low mana spells to make them bigger and then pump up again this mono white deck is just so consistent and it's so strong skyclave apparition in there for a little bit of removal if it does need it but the idea of this deck is literally to go down and just start attacking in as aggro as you can more removal, portable hole, nice early play. Sometimes can be left in your hand late game. It does become a bit of a dead card. But early play, you want to be clearing the field and just to be attacking with these creatures. So it is nice in there. Basics, 17 of them and one Frost Dragon that we see is quite popular having one of these in there. A bit of evasion flying over the top. It's a nice card and it's a cool rare, but possibly not essential if you want to cut down the rare again. You could do that or you could swap it and maybe add in another Skyclave or something like that. Let's have a sideboard. Um, there's only six in this sideboard, so you could, you know, there's missing one card. Sorry about that. Um, but maybe you could add in another one of them. <laughs> so environmental sciences, expanded anatomy, important to the deck. It is a countless deck as well as a second spell deck, and this will give your creature vigilance as well. Um, a couple of introductions to the relation because it doesn't really have removal. So this will help out. It helps out, draws a card for opponent, but it can get rid of something that'd be really, really awkward. Uh, this is a very, very strong deck, and if you can put it together, um, you'd definitely be ranking up and, and probably hitting some higher heights than usual. Um, maybe, you know, it depends what type of a play you are, but for me, if you this deck is super, super strong and probably will help you out a lot. So the final deck we look at has just the 10 rares, and it's one of my faves. I've uh, done plenty of videos on this type of deck before, and it's Mono Red Goblins. Super consistent. Uh, very, very aggro, runs obviously the great Goblin package. Uh, you've got Fireblade Charge, you've got these one drops that can come down first. Goblin Javanir, great against any early blockers. 
because uh, it deals one damage to the creature first, so you can get through with the attack, which is really nice. Battlecry Goblin, one of the most important cards to the deck because it can give everything a buff, but it gives it a haste as well, which is super strong. And then has an ability of pack tactics when the creatures have total power six or more great attack. You get a 1 1 Goblin attacking as well. Now, if you've got Hop Goblin Bandit Lord on there, it's not a 1 1, it's going to be a 2 2. And then it runs an arena card in Goblin Trash Master to give you that extra bit of Goblin bump up and makes your goblins a lot bigger. Relic Robber is in there as a one of giving him that zero one one can really hurt sometimes and uh, it really is a final way sometimes just to beat him down if they haven't got the removal to remove that creature that you give them um, it can be a wink on uh, Hulking Bugbear, Old Huggy Bear one of my faves, 3-3 three, three haste, doesn't do anything up, but it's just a great creature but you know for Uncommon comes down attack, it could be attacking for 4 if the whole Goblin is down it could be attacking as a 5-5 five, five with haste for 3 mana so Goblin, love them they are so aggressive. They are so strong. Um, maybe give them a little pump. Got combat tricks in this deck as well. You see a pair of goblins, so you can give them plus two, plus naught. Or you then put even more goblins down. But like I said with, with the old Huggy Bear, the one ones could be two twos, three threes. You never know how big they could be. But even if they're just there as sacrificial blockers for a bit, they, you know, they will do a job. Uh, bits of removal. We're going to run Snowlands. So you've got Frostbites as a four of. You've got four shocks as well. So clearing the field for your goblins uh shock is great because it does damage to opponent as well so you can finish an opponent off with that one frostbite doesn't it's not lightning bolt but it's still a very good card in standard as well not much to say about goblins it does run faceless haven as well uh great attacking land one of the best there is and obviously 19 snowlands and it also has another creature land in den of the bugbear and this creates a 1-1 goblin really strong four mana attack with the three two and then creates another creature as well but like I said, that 1-1 one, one could be bigger. Uh, goblins, very strong deck, and you will get very quick wins or very quick losses like this with the Mono White Aggro and this one as well. They will be very quick games, and you'll be able to just plow through games and easily do your dailies in these colours. Uh, that's a fact. But what's good about them is that they have good win percentage rates, and they will definitely help you rank up the ladder. So these were five of the best budget meta decks currently in Innistrad Midnight Hunt Standard. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you want to you know, give some of these a try and you've got the cards, even if you've got a couple missing and you maybe want to know what you maybe you could swap, you can leave me a message in the comments and I'll, I'll get back to you and let you know. Um, but obviously you might have ideas of yourself as well. So let me know what you might be swapping and everything like that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help. Shout out to my patrons who you know support me as well with that extra bit of support. I love it. But everyone that comments, watches the video to the end, you really do help support the channel. Um, anyway, this has been another top five. Hope you've enjoyed it. You lot take care and I'll see you on the next video.